Uh, Friar Tuck, this is my epoch, and um, you are uh, you are getting to see me with me using my new tripod. So see how I can do this, and now it's not shaking all over the place because I'm sitting here like this, and and I shake and do all this other stuff while I'm uh, while, while I'm talking. So now you guys will actually have a stable shot, um, and as you guys see, I also got Sam her. Uh, her doggy sleeping bag and i'm telling you she absolutely loves it last night it got down to about 40 degrees and I, she um she did well and the the sleeping bag was fine i, I woke up once to help put her back in the sleeping bag uh because she woke me up telling me i'm cold i'm cold so hey what's up joe nice uh nice to see you as well uh, so that's one update and then I want to tell you guys another update uh, of some things that you guys might be seeing So if you are subscribed in your feed You will see that I have been posting videos and you know making a comment about it probably even hashtagging it you know uh, and doing some real SEO so what I've been doing is uh, I could keep creating new content but there is some older content that I've done that it was actually done really well because I had the right setting, the right ability to be able to uh, put it together. And plus, you know, in the beginning for probably the first couple months until I uh, got out on the road because, uh, you know, I was housed up for probably the first three months of this channel. And so anyways... You know, I just, I, I had uh, I had Adobe, I was, you know, putting a lot more effort into my editing and, you know, there was, there was a lot more uniformity, you know, something that I hope to get back to once I get into maybe some sort of uh, stability. And that's kind of what I'm working on right now. And so I've been going back through and, uh, you know, re-keywording them, uh, rewriting the description, putting chapters in, changing the thumbnail, maybe even changing the title. And then I am throwing it up in the community tab to let you guys know. And I would strongly encourage you to come over and, you know, see some of these videos because, you know, I'm, I'm going through them. And if they're, if they're not good enough, uh, to meet the quality of content that I've got going on right now, um, then what I'm going, then what I'll end up doing is I will get it unlisted and I will put it for free over in the members, the the free member section over in um, on Patreon. But uh, right now I haven't found anything that is like. That, that isn't a quality content that portrays the message that uh, I've, I've kind of, you know, because when I first started out, I was like, okay, am I a prepper? Am I homeless? Am I both? What am I? Like, what do I talk about? Do I talk about this? Do I talk about that? Some things I had knowledge of, some things I didn't. Uh, and, you know, and, and I kept trying to navigate myself. So what ended up, uh, you know, I, and I ended up falling into the homeless niche uh, as far as, you know, but I originally started off as Hobo Prepper. So you'll probably hear, hey, hi, welcome. This is a Hobo Prepper and I am Friar Tuck. That is because up until I got to Chattanooga, um, I used to call myself the Hobo Prepper. I stopped calling myself the Hobo Prepper because one, um, I was I was better suited to talk about the homeless issue than I was to talk about the prepping. Um, even though it's kind of something that I've been doing for a majority of my life, I just, I don't, there's a lot more, a lot better skilled individuals out there. So I just kind of took that away. But also anytime I mentioned the word hobo in the city of Chattanooga, I would get ran out of coffee shops. Uh, I would, I would get ran out of anywhere that I was because they knew what the word hobo meant. And they're like, oh yeah, no, we don't want a guy like this in, in our establishment. And so they would run me out. And so I couldn't get any content recorded. I'd have to go run around the corner and, and stuff like that. So that's why I decided to change the name from hobo prep to the epoch of Friar Tuck because this is really a, a documentation of my journey and the, the journey that I've been on and you get to see how you know uh, how I had certain preconceived notions from my previous experiences and then kind of how things have changed and how I've come to understand the new wave of, of homelessness okay so I mean you, you'll be able to watch me grow and and you know also I will tell you I was probably about 150 pounds heavier than I am right now so don't be shocked when I'm like you know so um but anyways hey jeremy nice to see you did you change your name again um okay so uh, uh hey jason Carr, nice to see you joe uh, i had uh, uh, a rep film uh my 420 story three times noisy neighbors yeah i love those yard bastards man i, I love the whole calling them yard bastards um okay so all right i've said hi to everybody 
Um, so let me go ahead and get into today's topic, which is, you know, homelessness and civil unrest. And um, I told you guys when I got back here to Cincinnati that I wanted to meet up with my friend that I had met. He used to be on a bike. He'd come down and see me by the river uh, every couple of nights. He was that one person that, you know, checked up on me, make sure that, that I was safe, that I was still alive, that I was still good. Well, um, where I'm sleeping at right now, he just happened to be, you know, riding along that area. So I, I ran into him and him and I got to talking uh, about what's going on in Cincinnati and kind of how Cincinnati, you know, is getting more dangerous. And, you know, he, he's he lives here he's a local he's you know he's homegrown uh, i believe he's he's from this this region at least you know maybe just over the border but you know he's he's from this area and to hear some of the things that he was saying about how how dangerous it's getting because he's watching it on the news and how you know just a few days ago some old man got beat up down the street and i'm wondering like was this a homeless old man was this you know what did the guy do to have that happen or was it random you know and things like that but and i've always told you guys that when it comes to when it comes to violence especially out on the streets um, there's no such thing as being random. Uh, you have to do something in order to have that come on you. People don't just, uh, people will talk and yell and scream and create drama and gossip about you. But when, when it comes to fighting and things like that, uh, or, or any acts of violence, there, there is a line drawn and you only get it when you got it coming to you. Uh, but I have started to see because uh, I think it was my last premiere that I did uh, a couple days ago where the uh, I'm, I'm standing in the alley where I always do and this guy comes by and tells me, oh, this is a black only alley. And I'm like, really? I've been coming here last year and nobody's ever had an issue and him and I, you know, got to talk and I'm just like, you know what, I'm not dealing, I'm not dealing with somebody that's SOS, which for those of you that don't know, that means stuck on stupid. Okay. So... You know, and, and so I just, I, I let it be, I walked away, um, and you know, it's, I'm starting to see this become more prevalent. Uh, instead of, uh, of violence being something that is provoked, um, it is starting to become something that is, uh, that is not necessarily provoked. Like I was uh, walking down the street just a few days ago, and there was this guy where, uh, I, like, okay, he comes down, you ever seen somebody's eyes kind of like, um, you know, you see in those those really scary movies or those movies about like, um, you know, uh, uh, severe third world conditions and things like that where the guy's eyes, you can tell that there's so much hate and there's so much rage in there that all you gotta do is give him a reason and he's ready to go. And he started, he starts coming towards me and Sam and you know, I ended up taking a defensive position because I, I you know, with Sam, I gotta look around because there's always somebody trying to grab at her. And you know, this guy, this guy started coming towards me. I took a defensive position, uh, ready to, you know, exchange with this individual because I, the way that he was walking and everything else like that. And I, I think it's only a matter of time before individuals even like that just start going off because everybody's starting to get frustrated for various reasons. Um, there, there's the, the homeless services are, are being uh, drained down. A lot of the, the toll that is affecting the homeless is being affected because of what's going on with immigration. And so the homeless uh, are, are having to compete with, with other individuals uh, whether they have the right to be here or not, I'm not going to talk about, but it, they do have, uh, you know, we are competing with those individuals to be able to get food, resources, shelter, uh, and all those different things, especially when, you know, cities like New York are no longer giving these migrants, you know, luxury hotels. So now they're, they're coming out into, uh, into the shelters with us. Okay. And, you know, although I'm not in New York, this is, this isn't just happening in New York. New York is just where they can put a magnifying glass so that you can kind of see the animosity and the frustration that the local population is having based upon all this. And so people in their frustration and plus, you know, uh, my, my grandfather, okay, this is the other half of, of why I, why I see the unprovoked aggression happening. Um, and the other half of that is 
my grandfather, uh, who was a World War II veteran, he was a subscriber to a magazine called The New American. For those of you who don't know what The New American is, it was started by a senator during World War II uh, to, as a newsletter to inform Americans about the infiltration of the Communist Party into our government. And uh, by the by the mid '90s, they were labeled as a hate group, uh, as a as a, um, a domestic terrorist group, and they were they were labeled, uh, uh, you know not to be messed with okay uh and so by being associated with those people uh you you know you're kind of already on the list if you have and so my grandfather he he ended up uh, he was a, an avid reader and for one year for christmas he ended up getting me a subscription to the new american and quite frankly i learned a lot it was probably one of the most informative magazines that i ever read uh regardless of its slant and its bias and so on and so forth and it's you know pro-america propaganda which i mean nowadays uh, that that's you know that's not acceptable but apparently back then it wasn't even acceptable so um but uh one of the things that my grandfather used to stand up because of the one of the articles he read in the new american was he would call it the year of the child okay because when he grew up it was a child was seen and not heard okay Ch children didn't have rights they were they were an obligation they were a duty um, you know, you had to support them they, uh, until they got old enough. Uh, they couldn't pr uh, produce any of their food. And back in that time, everybody had to be able to produce uh, or carry their weight, produce their own food and contribute to the family. And so a child for its first so many years is a, is a negative contributor. And so therefore, as part of the way that society was, is because you're not contributing and you are relying on me and my production, therefore, you know, you don't speak until you're spoken to. But because of, of what was going on in the 60s and with the, um, with the, the whole uh, beginnings of the climate change, um, the, what do you call them, the, the, the climate change activists and, and things like that. Um, the, the child, just in like how you hear about these communist books where they, where they wanna create these certain divisions, well, part of that is, um, is by giving the children rights. And it, I'm not saying that children don't deserve rights. Children do deserve rights. They are human beings. They, there, are certain, there are certain lines which, which children must be protected. Okay, but the thing is, is we were on an extreme back then, and so now we've gone from, from that extreme over here to this extreme, which is now you can't spank your child in, in public. See, at the time my son was born, uh, they were talking about, because what happens, okay, let, let, let's talk about discipline in the home and how important it is, okay? So if you have no discipline in the home, uh, you sit there and, and you tell your child don't do it but because your child has no respect for you because they know that you're not gonna do anything about it. And if you do, uh, you're not going to follow through or be as effective as you think you are. And so therefore they're like, why, why the hell should I listen to this individual? Right? Okay. Well then all of a sudden they go to school and they, they get into a fight with another kid. And then that kid, um, goes to the hospital because of how, how your child did what they did. Now at, at that point in time, what they, what they were uh, doing was they would charge the child as a juvenile. But then they started talking about because the, the fights were getting so, uh, so bad that they wanted to start charging the parents for what their children did. So then all of a sudden you, you have this complete change uh, within society where they're like, okay, I'm not going to jail because my kid can't do this. I'm going to break him of fighting. I'm going to, I'm going to start being effective on my discipline. I'm going to change things around, so on and so forth. Well, that kid's going to fight you, uh, you know, all the way because, you know, they've gotten used to a certain thing. Okay, but now that all of a sudden you're because you now that know that you're going to be held accountable and now you're starting to hold your child accountable and start to institute discipline within the home. Now, all of a sudden, when you start doing that, they now make that a crime. So they're going to make it a crime for anything that your child does. But then if you try and discipline your child and teach them the right way to be, therefore, um, you do not have the rights to discipline your child. Okay, and this is playing out in everything. Um, so I was having a conversation with an individual uh, probably, uh, well, I think it was last night because I was so frustrated about uh, something that happened and you'll find out about this in the behind the scenes if you're on Patreon. Okay, 
But, you know, he was telling me that, oh, yes, I'm transvestite. I don't care if you call me he, she, anything else like that. Just respect me as a human being. I said, yeah, that's, that's fair. I, I can definitely do that. But, you know, I'm not going to play into this whole gender politics thing. And, you know, him and I, you know, we sat back. We had a conversation. And, and you know, he's like, I, I'm like, nobody's here to hurt you. Nobody cares that you are who you are. You know, you just be you. And, you know, everything's going to be fine. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be listening to all these horrors stories because uh, there there are probably extenuating circumstances and and he turns around and explains to me it's like look unless you live my lifestyle you don't know and I'm like you know what I finally understand that because I did not know how people how many people hated dogs until I got a dog I did not know how crazy society really was because in the same way that you can't discipline your, your child, but yet you're going to be held accountable for your child's actions, they, the same thing is treated with a, jo a dog. But in the reverse is with the dog is what they say is that, oh, um, if your dog acts out, you're a bad owner. You didn't discipline your dog. But if you discipline your dog, you're abusing your dog. And therefore, you know, we're going to make your life a living hell and we're going to try and start a fight with you. So therefore, it's the same thing. And the thing is, is if you look throughout society, there are certain things that, that you know, certain sex of society that you are part of that are that that, that kind of have their own little speak and their own little their, their own little clicks and I'm pretty sure you could probably sit back and look at it and see these things happening and so what this is going to le lead to uh, my plus what I was talking about earlier is this is going to lead to civil unrest because you have people that are so busy trying to manage somebody else's life that they forgot to manage their own life. They have no discipline, they, they have no willpower, and they have been being lied to for their, for their whole life. We have, we have completely upended every core value of, of our society, everything that made us the nation that we were. And it doesn't start in the political realm. It does not start with Donald Trump. What it starts with is it starts at the home with the family. You can't blame the government for breaking up the family when it's a, it's a husband and a wife that choose to keep the family together or to break it up okay but yet we've made divorce so lucrative for women that all all you know she gets tired of you she knows she gets half your stuff but she's gonna go find another man and take half of his stuff and so therefore we've actually commercialized divorce and then we wonder why uh, why why this is happening but if we if we stopped you know allowing these institutions to come in and, and you know be combative towards the family because it's between the husband and wife. We're together, we're going to stay together, and we're gonna keep a family. If we're gonna split, we split after the kids turn 18, you know, because we, we don't like each other or whatever, okay? But we're gonna keep it civil. You know, when, when you don't do that, but you're so, you know, like, okay, this person stubbed my toe and looked at me wrong, and so therefore I, I want to, you know, I want to go find someone else because, you know, I'm not, I'm not able to be satisfied, and so therefore I will never be satisfied in a relationship, so therefore I keep going off to the next greener pasture, hoping that that will give me the satisfaction that I can't seem to find. Okay, so these are just some some basic things that I'm seeing that's happening within society as uh, as just kind of how it's all breaking down and it really breaks down within the core unit and then it just reflects itself and echoes itself out and you know the the worse that it gets um, as it echoes out the 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 less tolerance and the less ability people have to be able to have any kind of civil discord or civil conversation. Okay. So, um, that is, you know, and, and so that is my, what, what I wanted to talk about today as far as, you know, the topic, so on and so forth. Like I generally do, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open up the floor. I'm going to, I need, I need glasses. I won't wear them. Um, so I'm going to have to move closer to the screen so I can actually read it. <sighs> Okay, hope I don't give anybody a whiplash or trigger somebody. <laughs> okay, so let's, let, man, you guys really lit up chat. So let's see what kind of questions, let's see what kind of things you guys have to say. And hey, by the way, uh, tip jars down in the description. Um, oh, and I, after I'm done answering these questions, I'm kind of going to, I'm going to cover a secondary topic. Um, and this is going to be about transitioning uh, between, between, you know, seasonal gear, not only that, but just kind of getting prepared for what's going on, especially if you're homeless or you're going to be homeless and, and all these different things, because this is, this is something that I've been thinking about because I'm in that situation. So I'm trying to figure out how to resolve it. So therefore I'm going to share this with you, but I want to go ahead and answer everybody's questions first. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Uh, hey, Bushcraft, nice to see you. Uh, I stole that from Australian bird that swears. I loved it. Oh, I like it. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. So, hi, Bush. Okay. Um, I'm the same. I am the same library as you. I can say hi when you are done with the stream. Um, okay. Uh, that's That would be nice. I don't know who you are. Um, but anyways, uh, almost every encounter that involves violence is over perceived disrespect almost every encounter that well, uh, um yes and the thing is that's ego that's pride that that's emotional um uh instability it, it really is so um going back to sativa um I, i'm i'm an indica guy so hey what's going on tim scott all right, so combination of rock, sex, drugs, uh, counterculture is the reason. And no, I don't think that the counterculture had anything to do with it. Um, this, this was, this is a, um, this is more political than anything. I, I really think that politics had a way of doing it. Okay, so um, let me tell you a quick, a quick piece of history. So many of you have heard about the War of 1812, but nobody really talks about what the real, uh, what the real thing was going on with the War of 1812. Okay, uh, you, it's very hard to find this, but it, this is out there. There is historical record of it. Um, that's why I can actually talk about it. Okay, so um, post-revolutionary war, uh, the, the Crown Bank of England, like the Rothschilds have always done, have loaned to both sides, okay? So we owed money to the Crown Bank of England, to the Bank of France, and I think to, to the, the Bank of Germany, okay? So we all do all this money. So because we couldn't pay that money back, uh, they instituted the, um, the, the U.S. Constitution, okay? That's what caused the Constitutional Convention because... Uh, the Articles of Confederation did not give the government any teeth to be able to lay and collect taxes, to stabilize the currency, to per, you know, do common defense. It was just it was it was a, a skeleton of a government to begin with. Okay, so once they did the, the Constitution, it was ratified in in 1789 uh, with the Bill of Rights, thanks to Thomas Paine. Uh, about 20 years later is when the charter for the first bank of the United States was up, and be part of us being able to pay back our war debt and part of the contract that was going on there is that the Crown Bank of England through um, not Thomas Paine, uh, Alexander Hamilton uh, was able to dig their way into uh, into the whole uh, constitutional convention. And uh, we, as part of us paying our debt back, we had to keep the Crown Bank of England. Well, in a way to be able to say, screw you, or to screw you, we don't want to renew the charter. We'll pay our debt, but we're not going to do this charter because, you know, it's taking away our freedoms. And that's what started the War of 1812. Uh, it was, was really that. So, um, you know, so to, to be able to say that, uh, that, that you know, cu counterculture and all this stuff has something to do with it, I, I really, uh, I, I disagree. I think this is political because even um, when we had the Civil War going on, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln and the, uh, the chairman, I think, of the Bank of New York, uh, was you know going back and forth, and the the, the banks actually tried to uh, cause the North to uh, to fail because they wanted the South to win uh, for various reasons because of free trade and cotton, and they didn't want to pay for the dyes. And it, again, it was economics uh, uh, had a, a big part to do with it, and, and so you know um, it just. But anyways, I just count uh, the with what was going on in in the New York Times in the editorial section, they were doing shots across the bow between Abraham Lincoln and the chairman of the Bank of New York, I believe, okay? And so they believed, and they even did it to Andrew Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson uh, ended the second first bank of the United States by paying back all of our debt and removing all of the gold from the second first bank of the United States to give us 87 years without a central bank. That's part of what made America great. So again, I think it has to do with subversion through the political spectrum, okay? The, in um, around, I think it was around 1812, 1815, there was what's called the original 13th Amendment. The original 13th Amendment is uh, no titles with nobility. Now, post-Civil War, it was integrated into the actual Constitution, and then they replaced that 13th Amendment with um, neither slavery now nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States, okay? And... Um, 
uh, uh, so the, the, the big thing was is that lawyers, because they were operating on behalf and represent the interests of, of the financial parties, uh, mostly the bank, because they wanted to make sure that their, that their financial interests were protected, so therefore they created the Lawyers Guild uh, for their own protection. Uh, you know, they, have, they, they put people out there to, to be able to, um, uh, to, to, to be able to write laws in favor of the, uh, of, of the bank. And so, so many of these politicians were lawyers. And so in order to be able to prevent lawyers from getting into Congress and destroying the Republic in which we created, we created the original 13th Amendment, which is no titles of nobility because every lawyer is an esquire, which is a step below a gentleman. Okay, so, um, okay, so, uh, hello everyone, hi, da da okay, hey All-American, nice to see you, um, uh, okay, glad to see Sam in the sleeping bag, yes, thank you, uh, I got a job outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, oh, nice to see you, Slack, I am in Cincinnati, um, well, that is good, so you got a, a, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, what you doing, man, tell me what you doing, so, okay, um, uh, uh, trust me, divorce is expensive because it's uh, worth the money. Yeah, of course. It's a, you're the one is the guy that has to pay the bill while the woman gets. To, yeah, it's it's the limited liability. Okay, say uh, okay, slack. Take care. Uh, okay, slavery still exists all over the world, yet no one brings that up. Yeah, it actually exists through. Um, uh, there was actually a white paper written about it. A uh, professor out of Oregon, I think it was maybe Carl Jung, um, who. Uh, who wrote it and yeah basically he said that, that the corporations disliked the d uh, dissolution of the plantation because it was easier to take care of your uh, of your livestock or your assets as they uh, uh, so commonly referred to us as uh, it was much easier to take care of us and, and provide us with food now they actually have to give us a livable wage and so therefore it cuts into their profits and then they have to deal with power and control issues okay so but um, Okay, so can somebody, I, I said I was, I, I'm trying to keep my, I, I'm working on my memory, but my memory is always going to be bad. So if one of you guys that are really, really listening to me and uh, know what I was talking about, uh, what I said I, I would talk about here in a minute. Um, oh, oh yes, I remember what I was going to talk about. Okay, so um, we, with, with everything that's going on in Israel, with everything that's going on in Ukraine, with everything that's going on domestically. Um, this is just, it's a giant powder keg ready to blow. Now, one of the, the, one of the things that I wanted to do while I, while I started this channel, one of the things that was um, important that I cover in my journey of homelessness was to be in the cities to catch the civil unrest, to be able to catch a lot of that stuff because I wanted to be able to document the, uh, the crumbling of society from my point of view. And so uh, that's part of the reason why I originally wanted to go up into like the upper Northeast and, you know, kind of do the, the Appalachia Trail because I could have gone to some of the bigger cities like New York. And if there was stuff that was going on, I could document it. I, could, I, I don't want to be a war journalist. I want to be able to be a, um, a, a mobile correspondent to be able to cover um, the, the the breakup of the uh, United States of America um, from a homeless man's point of view, I guess you could say. So that's kind of one of the things that I was hoping to um, to, to kind of be a part of, which means I'm going to be putting myself in danger, which means it's important that Sam acts appropriately because if she doesn't in the wrong situation, um, it could cost both of us our lives or at least me mine, okay? Or even worse, her hers, okay? So, I mean, it is what it is, but you've got to um, really, uh, uh, you know, I I've got to be really thoughtful about that. So with the, the way that everything's kind of falling apart and the, the one thing that I keep talking about, what makes Cincinnati so attractive uh, for this time in, in, in history, for this point in history, Cincinnati is attractive for one primary reason. I can hop on a trail if I go east, I can hit the AT, I can hit the, um, I can hit the, the East Coast Greenway. Okay, if I go, um, if I go west, I could hit the Pacific Coast Trail, the Great Divide, um, and then I could go north or south, and then I could hit the Southern Trail that goes off, or the 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 Middle of America Trail, or the Northern Trail. There, this is basically, if you want a perfect jumping off point to go anywhere in the country, 
and you know just to have a, a good place to start that gives you the best logistics cincinnati is that place for for that time being okay so what is it that that i am that i am working on one of the things that i am working on is that um i i i want to be able to have a day pack with me okay so like a 40 liter backpack okay it's not going to be that big it's just large enough for my sleeping bag sam's sleeping bag the tarp uh my my camera gear and um and just like my my basic stuff that i need to be able to go around uh around town so it's not some big girthy bag that i'm walking through because i mean with, with pockets on the side and kind of bulging out in some in certain areas it just it's kind of hard to even walk down an aisle so i want something that's more compact that allows me the opportunity to um, to be a little bit more mobile and it'll also be a little bit lighter on my back um, and plus when um, when I go into certain places it's just it's gonna be a lot uh, easier to deal with versus having the big old backpack okay um, but the thing is is what I will end up doing is I'm gonna be looking for a way to store my um, to store my my big pack I one thing is you never want to if you make it off the streets all that gear that you had, the important stuff, the stuff that was good, that was quality, that's going to carry along with you, um, that is something that, uh, that that you keep just in case because you know it, it, you don't want to have to go back out and replace it. And if they're not making it anymore, you definitely can't replace it. So giving your gear away and and you know downsizing and stuff like that. Um, I waited until I was comfortable enough to where I thought, okay, I don't think I'll ever be homeless again because, you know, I'm starting a business. I got two houses going. I got all this stuff going. It's, it's, you know, my life is, is on the upward trajectory, but, you know, you know, all things that go up must go down. And so with, with that being said, I just... Um, I've always kept my gear and the one time that I didn't was the one I, I really regretted it because I had a really really nice Coleman 90 liter backpack I paid a hundred bucks for it and I bet you it would still be intact today um, and, and it would you know and that would have saved me a lot of money um, and a lot of hassle uh, for what it, what it was that, that I ended up going with okay um, you know, having a good sleeping bag. If you, you know, you don't want to get rid of it, wash it, store it properly, air it out, stuff like that, keep it around. Because you never know um, when the world's going to turn upside down and you're going to end up being uh, thrust back out here. Because the the unfortunate statistic is, is that once you've become homeless, you are more likely to become homeless over and over and over again. Uh, and for it to become something more chronic. Uh, and, you know, it requires a, a lot of different things, okay? So, anyways, it looks like I am losing people's interest. So, real quick, I just wanna ask you guys, do you guys have any questions for me? Anything that you guys would like to know? Um, any updates, anything else like that? Um, and, uh, da, 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 da. So I, I'm going to I'm going to start kind of like winding down. And if I see a question during that process, then I will stop long enough to be able to answer. Um, I'm lurking, just rolling smokes. Oh, dude. Yeah. You know what? Um, you better if you're going to be if you're going to be homeless, there's two things you should be good at. Um, one is is snipe hunting. If you don't know what snipe hunting is, that means going and finding little cigarette butts that have a little bit of tobacco on it and breaking it down. And then that way you sit there and you twist one up. Okay. So that is, if you're a smoker um, and you don't know how to roll a cigarette, you better start learning now because there's going to come a time when you may have to do it, not because you lose everything, but because they're so damn expensive. It's cheaper to find, to find a few butts on the ground and roll one than it is to go out there and buy a pack, you know, and you're, it's, it's not any less hygienic, uh, than this than what you're getting out of a pack because you're not smoking the filter you're taking the tobacco and you're taking all of the wasted tobacco and recycling it okay so um, that's just that's just one thing so uh, and I actually have a tutorial about this if you want to come over to uh, patreon it's in the hobo tutorial section on how to roll a smoke um, uh, you know, it's just that that's it's extremely important um, that you learn it. And I, I actually did a tutorial on it on my Patreon channel. OK, so um, hey, Cherokee, nice to see you. Uh, hey, you know what? I smoked a I, I smoked a bowl um, 
uh, before I started, so I always do. Um, speaking of, um, something that I'm not going to talk too much about, I'm going to talk more about in the, um, in the behind the scenes because I don't want to talk too much, uh, uh, you know, just for various reasons. So, um, you guys know that there's always people that anytime I do something with Sammy that they like it, they don't like it, and then they decide that it's their job to tell me how to do whatever it is that I'm doing with Sam, okay? Um, a lot of self-righteous people who they themselves wouldn't follow their own advice. And um, so one of them decided to try and start a fight with me last night. Um, and uh, I'm like I said, I'm gonna save most of this for the uh, for for after effect, but anyways uh, So they, they try to start a fight with with me and um, I think I blacked out for probably a good three or four seconds maybe Okay, cuz I all I remember was Sam uh, holding on to Sam and next thing I come to um, you know, I I notice that Sam is standing at attention and she is like I don't know, it's almost like she went on point because she knew something was up, something was wrong. Uh, and it's kind of like the whole world slowed down for me. Um, sound ceased to exist. And um, I, I really had one of those experiences where it was like, it, it, was, it was weird. It was, it, was, it was definitely different. Um, the last time any, re I had a reaction like this, I was, um, I was 15. Okay. So this was before my work accident. Since my work accident, every time that this happens, I've blacked out. So that's, that's something to be able to, to, to learn and to understand. And so, uh, I, uh, I, I don't know if I did black out or if I didn't, but what I do know is that if for the first time I had complete control over what was going on because the, the second I looked up and saw who it was um, and what it was, uh, I, I kind of stopped in my tracks because of instinct and it was just like sitting there just kind of like watching the world go and you're so slow and just looking left, looking right, looking down before all of a sudden just like it speeds right back up and you catch back up to reality. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, I really managed to, uh, I walked out so upset that uh, uh, the security guard outside, he's like, man, I got to go in there and see what, the, what what just happened. But he missed it all. And the old man security guard that's there, he's so frail. He's like 82 years old doing security. What's he going to do? Okay. And yet there's there's nobody doing that. So me, I, I'm making the choice to no longer go in their dining room and eat their food, which means now I've had another avenue closed down because, again, we've got children, you know, Lord of the Flies going on in... In, in, by a bunch of adults in society, okay? So, but it is what it is. Can you talk about how people get robbed off uh, by, uh, by being a fool? Okay, yes, I think you even asked me to, to cover that. I will cover that in this live stream since it looks like we're covering people. So, um, uh, so, so getting robbed, okay. Uh, I have to deal with this a lot with Sam, okay? So because, of, you know, I'm missing a couple of my, my teeth, uh, I can't whistle very well. So the thing is, is when I walk by, uh, people are whistling at Sam and they're calling at her and stuff like that. But because they're not calling at her in the way that I do, she just ignores them and keeps going. What these people are actually trying to do, and it, it happens uh, quite frequently, is that um, they are trying to peel Sam away from me. They're saying, is your dog disciplined enough? And is your dog loyal enough? Okay, so probably about three or four times a week, I have somebody, whether it be within the homeless community, um, uh, whether it be in the house community or somewhere in between, uh, I have those individuals that are sitting there and they are, um, uh, they're, they're, they're making an attempt to do this, okay? So that's part of, you know, you, you have to, especially if you have an animal, you need to be able to train it to do things and you need to be able to put commands and other things in there that are going to prevent your dog from being exploited. Because, you know, dogs are, dogs are social. It doesn't matter how loyal they are to you. Dogs are social creatures. And especially young, the younger the dog, the more apt they are to want to go play with people and you know get pet and get loved on and all this other stuff okay because dogs are dogs okay um, and uh, just just 
there are people out there that do that. Uh, another thing that you uh, that that also tells me that people are trying to do that, um, and this is also a telltale sign. This goes this goes off of a lot of different different um, uh, interactions regardless of what you're doing. So if somebody's doing something such as, um, uh, there was a guy, he grabbed Sam by the muzzle. And as soon as he did, I told him, get your hand off my dog, okay? Because you grabbing a dog by a muzzle is, by the muzzle is a form of dominance. It is, it is a way to be able to yoke that dog and to get it to submit to you. When Sam doesn't sit, I use her muzzle to force her back, to force her to sit down. Um, it, it just like you and your head, it's what controls you. And so if somebody grabs you by that, that is their way of dominating you, okay? And so when you call somebody out like that, they're like, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do this. I... Okay, and then they'll turn around and call you crazy. Okay, because the thing is, is they got caught and then they want to act like, oh, no, that's an ugly dog. I wouldn't want that dog. Okay, that that is another uh, way in which you're being marked. Um, okay, so I had I, I, I had uh, just another example of the same thing. The other day, Sam and I go into Daily Bread. This guy uh, whistles and calls and grabs at Sam and I told him no. And I, I indirectly called him a pedo. You know, I said, you know, this is, you know, if she was a, if she was a little girl, you wouldn't be doing that. It's, people would say things about you, you know, but apparently because it's a dog, it's okay. And yeah, he did not, he did not understand that. And I was like, okay, yeah, what, whatever. But he starts running off. Oh yeah, you got an ugly dog. I don't want that dog. Nobody wants that dog. Da, 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 da. Because he was trying to, in the moment, um, fulfill his need for his instant gratification to be able to take the dog. Because once, once you get it, it's just like children. You know, you have, oh, there's a dog, there's a dog, I wanna play with it, I wanna play with it, then you forget about it, then all of a sudden it becomes, and you, you think that you love dogs, but if you love dogs, then you'll understand that every dog has to be able to have certain conduct, and if they don't have that conduct, then they need to be trained and reprimanded accordingly, because whether you like it or not, it's kind of, you, you gotta deal with it, just like with your children when they act out, whether it be in public or in front of friends or at home, you still gotta put that child in line, and you have to discipline Discipline that child and no nobody likes watching a child be disciplined but it is necessary otherwise they become Lord of the Flies okay so these are our big big indicators that somebody is trying to do things always keep a mental inventory of everything in which you have okay um, there it's it's very rare that somebody can ever get anything from me because I'm always keeping, I always have a mental check note. Even though I have memory issues, this is one of the few areas where like the, there's something in me naturally that just remembers everything because it, it's, it's something that I use to keep people from stealing my lighters and I know who has my lighter at all times. And so I will call them out, Hey, give me my lighter back. And then they'll, you know, do some stuff, okay? So, um, but uh, you, you just, you, you have you, you have these people that will just kind of, you know, as it's going back and going through, then all of a sudden they'll just put it in their pocket or something along those lines. And uh, they, if you catch them, they'll be like, ha ha ha, I was just playing, okay? Okay, so a lot of people will do that. Uh, another thing is, is, is you know that you're being marked is when you start seeing the same people come by uh, looking at you, uh, maybe spending, uh, you know, taking a little bit too much time, getting a little too much involved in uh, in what it is that you're doing, especially like your campsite and stuff like that. Uh, somebody that takes a keen interest in what's going on because you're not that interesting of a person. Okay, so there there is there is an opportunity uh, for them to do that. It's uh, it just because what they're doing is they're gaining your trust and breaking your walls down. Then you see them. Then one day they notice that you're not there. They go in there. They take your camp. Okay, so so be careful uh, of things like that. But yes, keeping a mental inventory is also important so that you know where everything is at. Um, when you are around a large group of people, only elect a lot. Uh, only allow a few select things out of your um, uh, out of uh, out of your uh, uh, out of your control. Don't don't let don't have a bunch of stuff flying around. Uh, don't have your stuff laid around because people are observant. They're looking. You don't want to give them a reason. Okay. So these are some things that you could do that would help you avoid um, uh, avoid being uh, uh, you know, targeted for theft or anything else like that. Now. 
Uh, as far as being targeted to uh, for violence, um, a lot of that has to do with uh, who did you who did you make mad, you know, and how not just who did you make mad. Kind of think of it like this: some some lowly peon, he ain't gonna do anything. But if you're talking to somebody who's in upper management of a controlling or organization, they're gonna use their power and their influence, and they're gonna make sure that things get done and get dealt with because you just don't do this or that to me because again you hurt their pride just like that guy that grabbed at sam i, I you know after he got done running his mouth i stood up and i said you know i'm so sorry that i hurt your feelings i mean and i'm the guy next to him tried not to laugh it was kind of funny but it is what it is all right so guys um you know how to help the channel subscribe share leave comments um you know stuff like that so okay um Hold on, let's see here. Let's, we got some, can you talk about, okay. Uh, you need to be careful about posting videos and your location. People are crazy. Yes, I know this. Um, I've already had to deal with one stalker. Uh, do shelters do a pat down search? Uh, usually it's a metal detector. Sometimes they will do a pat down search. It just depends upon, you know, what kind of dictatorship you got in your local region. So, um, let's see, uh, that type of dog you have is one that has to burn energy. An energetic young dog needs to be checked. Um, yes, not only that, she, yeah, I, I could see that. Um, she, she definitely does have a lot of energy and I take her to the dog park two, two, sometimes three times a day, give her, you know, a good couple hours to just go run around with dogs. But then, you know, I gotta go to work. I gotta come to the library. I gotta, you know, get on the computer. I gotta start doing my work. It's not like I can leave her at home. You know, if I can leave her at home, things would be a lot different. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah, don't loan out lighters. Uh, I light for someone. You know what, some people will will get really offended with you about that. And I, I think it's a 50-50 on whether or not they were actually gonna do it to begin with. But, uh, you know, just some people are like, dude, I'm not gonna steal your lighter. Like me, I, I understand it, but I'm like, I'm not gonna steal your lighter. I don't want your crap. But you know, if I was gonna steal your lighter, then I'd be like, you know, well, man, uh, your lighter's ugly. I didn't want it anyways. You know, something like that. Okay. So that that is that is that, and that is how that works. But anyways, guys, you guys know how to be part of the family. So again, everything is down in the description, tip jar, Patreon. Uh, come and become a subscriber on my blog or on my website. Okay. I want to start doing a newsletter, but I don't think I have any subscribers over there. So until I get my first subscriber, I'm not going to be making newsletters and I am going to be trying to push it as much as possible. So please <coughs> come check out hobotuck.com. And um, I will see you, let's see, what is today Saturday? So I will see you in Tuesday's live stream. It will be around, um, it'll be around 6, 6.15 uh, that, I will, uh, th that I will be uh, starting the live stream. And uh, it will go till no later than 8 because that's when the library closes. But anyways, guys, I will see you in, um, in the live stream next week. And for those of you on Patreon, uh, I will see you in, um, I'll see you Monday, if not sooner, with um, some new video releases. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next, uh, uh, in, in the next live stream.